that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Oh, hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. Today, I'm very excited to be checking out Labyrinthius from Keep Games. It's for one to four players, ages, let's say, about 11, 12 and up. It'll take you about 30 minutes to play. And in Labyrinthius, you are going to be trying to go through the evil king's Labyrinthius. He's going to be trying to kill you, and you're going to be trying to survive with your potions and your weapons, trying to avoid traps and skill checks and rolling dice and, well... Possibly opponents who might just come back from the dead and try and kill you. Sound intriguing? Let's open up and see how it works. All right, and we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Labyrinthius on our handy-dandy grip map. But as I like always like to mention, this is the promotional copy I have in front of me. So take what you see here with a grain of salt. First and foremost, we have our handy-dandy rule sheet. It's about uh, three pages, double-sided, full color. It'll have you up and running in, eh, I'd say, no time at all. Could, it's a little bit weirdly worded, but overall, it does a good job at what it tries to do. Uh, so next, we're going to go over the components, and we'll go into the gameplay. But first, what are you doing in this game? Well, you're going to be taking control of one of these brave fighters and trying to make your way through an evil king's kind of arena thing, trying not to die and gaining what are called gate stones. If you can gain four gate stones, then fight a titan, well, then well, the king will spare you and you won't die. Most of the time, though, you are going to die, and then, well, you're just trying to... Uh well, not die mostly in this game. So let's go into the components, then we'll get into the gameplay. So first and foremost, you are going to get, uh, I believe you're going to get four. You might even get more. Who knows if the Kickstarter does really well. These are going to be your little character cards here. Uh, these are actually kind of thick and sturdy. And they are going to be six-sided. And they're six-sided because you're going to be able to store all your different items around your guy. So let's take a look at this so you can see what's going on. First, as you can see, you're going to start with zero defense. You're going to start with ten health. And you're going to have little health trackers, which we'll show you a little bit. You're going to have a spot for your hand, your hand, your chest. You're actually going to be putting cards on the outside of this so you can see all the different things you have. A ring spot, an X spot, and then you'll be able to hold two items. Also, each one is going to have his own unique special abilities. So, for instance, Jaren took the Halfling Trickster. He's going to be good at skill checks, and also he has the unique ability uh, of avoiding traps. He's going to be able to get rid of his, one of his treasures and then reset the trap for the next person, which means, uh, especially if if you were to get the dwarf who actually gets negative two to skill checks, you can really hurt other people uh, who go after you. But each person is going to have their own unique special uh, special ability and also their own unique uh, amount of health and defense. So, for instance, this guy is all about defense. He's actually going to get one defense. He's the only one who starts with defense. And he, if he doesn't fight one round, the next round he's going to gain another defense. He's actually my favorite guy to play because uh, I like playing defensive characters. You know, uh, you got the you got this guy who's going to start with 14 health, but negative two to skill check. So if he's dealing with traps and stuff like that, well, it's bad news for him. Last but not least, you got Elf who's going to get plus one combat when he does. Uh, range damage and his, his deck is all about for the most part range damage because he's an elf but we'll get more into how the decks work later so next you're going to get these uh these dual tokens which will either turn surface as gate stones and you need to collect four of those in order to win the game uh, or health markers because you're going to be trying not to lose your health markers because if you lose your health markers you will flip over your guy and you will become dead but don't worry you can still attack people you just can't win the game but you can try and make it so other people don't uh, don't win the game so you can try and attempt to make sure that everybody loses the game so, next what you're going to be getting are encounter cards and uh, boo, 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 treasure cards. There's the word. Um, but So, what's going to happen here is each person is going to have their own unique symbol on the back of both encounter and treasure cards. So, these right here are treasure cards, and these are the encounter cards. They're marked with the E and the T. And as you can see, this is all the, I believe this is the dwarf's deck, because he has his own little symbol here. So, when you're playing uh, a two-player game, what you're going to do is you're going to take both of your car th guys right here, figure out which of their symbols are which, and then you're going to take all of their treasure cards and mix them together. Then you're going to take all of their encounter cards and mix them together. But we're not done because there is one more type of cards I need to talk to you about, and that are these cards right here, which, trust me, will be the bane of your existence if you play this game. And they are plus one to all encounters, damage, skill, and defense. Draw another encounter card. Uh, this is not for you... These are for the bad things that are trying to kill you. So, the, says the town at the bottom, the king is bored, so he's turned up the heat. 
And uh, for each player in the game, you are going to have three of these scattered about the encounter deck, which is going to make things particularly difficult if you happen to be unfortunate enough to draw two, three, four, God forbid, five or six of them. Uh, but we'll, we'll get more into that later. So, when you're starting the game, what you're going to do, everybody's going to draw three treasure cards from the deck. One, two, three, and we are ready to roll. So the gameplay itself is really super simple. There's essentially going to be three phases in your turn. The first phase is going to be the prep phase. You're going to drink any potions and equip any items that you may have. So let's take a look at what we got. We have a, uh, a weak potion right here, so we'll put that down in our little item slot right down there. We have a ring of walls, which is what we discard. is going to gain us plus one defense, so we'll put that on our hand right there. And then we have a, what, oh, a ring actually goes down at the bottom. Excuse me. And then we have our robe of many things. Uh, discard to draw one treasure card. So we can do that whenever we want. And that will, uh, that will give us a treasure card. So that's pretty good. So we'll go ahead and put that down in our uh, item down there. So now we've played all the cards, we've prepped all what we're going to do, and we are ready to roll. So when you are ready to roll, you're going to move on to the second stage, which will be the encounter phase. And this is very simple how this works. Pay attention, folks. You are going to draw one encounter card. So we'll draw an encounter card, and we'll see what we're going to deal with. We got lucky. We're just going to draw two treasure cards. Boom, shock, lock it, discard that, draw two of the treasure cards, and uh, we got some good stuff looking around here. And then we're down to our last phase, which is the cleanup, where you're going to drink any potions, equip any more items, and discard any cards that won't fit into your backpack, because your backpack is going to be the cards in your hand, and you can have up to six cards in your hand. So let's this. This is going to increase our backpack size by two. Hey, you know what? We're actually going to discard this thing, which will give us a, uh, an additional treasure. So we'll take this treasure. We'll put this down here, so now our backpack size is by two, and then we'll look at it here. we got a mechanical claw, which is going to give us a little bit of attack. Discard to gain plus two combat. Now, one thing I want to mention right now is that most items that you're going to have in this game in your treasure pile are going to be one-time uses. Every once in a while, you'll run into some that will have what's called hardness. Now, when you get one of these and you play them, say if it's, for instance, it says hardness of two, you're going to put two life tokens on top of that, and each time you use it, you're going to take one off. And once, uh, once you have none of the life tokens on that item, then that item goes away. But for the most part, what you're going to get are going to be one-time use items. So let's go ahead and show you uh, how the attack works, or how the encounters work, so you can see exactly how that works. So for instance, okay, here's a good one. We have rats. They are a monster. They are going to have one attack, and they are going to have two defense. So in order to beat these monsters, we are going to have to beat their two defense. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll our six-sided die to see if we can beat the rat. And look at there, we did. We got a three. Now, before we move on, I want to mention that uh, you only get to roll one dice unless, of course, you roll a six. This game has what's called exploding dice. So if you roll a six, you get to roll another dice in addition and add up your score, which means you're going to be, well, a lot more likely to beat things. Uh, when you beat a monster, what's going to happen is that you are going to gain a treasure card. Good for you! But, also, if your symbol is down here at the bottom, you're also going to earn one of the four gate stones that you're going to need in order to win the game. Uh, the traps work pretty much the same way as well, where you're going to be rolling a standard D6 die. There will be some modifiers, so for instance, uh, the the EO, the Drunken Wharf, is going to have minus two to uh, all skill checks, which are essentially traps, and uh, the Trickster is actually going to have plus two to all skill checks. But for the most part, you're just going to roll the D6 die and go by that. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at some more of the encounters so you can see the final guy that you're going to have to face. Now I mentioned the way to win this game and how you're going to win. Is there's two ways to win. You can either outlast your, uh, your opponents, if you want to play that way, and then make it so that you're the last one alive. Or you can get four of these gate stones, but it's not that simple. You can't just get four gate stones because then you have to go through your deck and fight what's called a titan. But I'll get to him in a second. Uh, I don't think I mentioned this. The only way you get gate stones is if you fight monsters with your symbol on it. So, for instance, that's a terrible uh, example. Let me find a monster over here. 
Uh, so, for instance, if you were the jester and you fought one of the, the rat, which was this guy's symbol, then you don't get a gate stone. So you have to get four of your own monsters. But once you have four, you're going to go through the pile and you're going to find a titan, uh, which will have this word right here. It'll say titan, because that's a word. And you're going to have to fight this guy, and he is very powerful. He does three damage, and he has six defense, so you're going to have to bring the pain to kill him. Also, one more thing I want to mention is that a lot of the times when you're battling things, there are going to be uh, text down here, special things. So, for instance, this Titan, if you lose, you cannot use weapons or armor until you are healed for a total of five health. So, if you lose to this guy, it's going to be really pretty crippling. Um, so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be going back and forth, trying to uh, trying to fight different monsters, go on different encounters, uh, go past traps, and hopefully not die. Now, if you do die, it's not of the end of the world. Instead, what you're going to be doing is you're actually going to be attacking your other opponents and trying to kill them so that they cannot win the game. And that, in a nutshell, is how Labyrinthius is played. Ogre Dogre, Labyrinthius, coming to a Kickstarter near you from Keep Games. One of my final thoughts. Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, the game is not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. One to four players, so if you have a big, bigger gaming group, might not be for you. Also, the game is very, very simple, which is going to be a turn off to some people. Essentially, on your turn, all you're going to be doing is you're going to be drinking potions or equipping items or then flipping over one encounter card, fighting a monster, doing a skill check, or drawing cards doing that sort of thing, and then at the end of your turn, you're just going to either discard down to six cards or equip more stuff or drink more stuff, and that's all you're doing over and over and over again, so that's going to be a turnoff for some people. Another kind I had, well, this one specifically for solo gamers, is that I, I feel like the special abilities when you're playing a multiplayer game, oh, well, they're pretty well balanced. However, in a solo game, some of them feel like they're not as good as other ones, in particular the Jester. He has a really cool special ability where he's going to be better at uh, skill checks, but... Well, he's also going to be kind of evil because he's going to leave that same that same trap to the next player. When you're playing solo, obviously, well, you don't want to do that because you're always the next player. So in a solo one, you're pretty much never going to play with this guy. Um, the last con, though, and the biggest con I have with this game is the graphic design. Now, I'm going to recommend this game, but only if they fix the graphic design because there were quite a few issues that mounted up that really annoyed me. The first one is the backs of the cards. These are the treasure cards, these are the encounter cards. They look very, very similar. The only difference is the slight color that's different. There's yellow and there's red, but they look pretty much the same, especially when you're trying to, to mix them up and they get mixed up. Another thing, on the front, there's teeny tiny type. The type is incredibly small, and I have decent eyesight with my glasses and my contacts in, and I still had issues reading the bottom of these player cards, which is annoying. Make that a little bit bigger. Uh, the last kind I have are these symbols down at the bottom, because you're going to need to separate your deck, your treasure deck, and your encounter deck every single game, which doesn't sound like a big deal. However, you need to make sure you know your symbol. And how do you know your symbol? Well, you either memorize it or you have to go to the rule booklet. I don't want to go to the rule booklet every time to remember my symbol. You need to plop slap dab that symbol on these player cards right here. Seems like an easy fix. That's because it is an easy fix. Go ahead and do that, Keep Games, at least in my personal opinion. Moving on to the pros. I sound like I have a lot of cons with this game, but I did enjoy this game. It is a nice, light, fun, quick playing, simple game that scratches that one inch, which I think is essential for a game like this to scratch when a game's that simple, and then I think this is a good gateway game because the mechanics are very, very simple. Uh, I mean, it's just, you're, like I mentioned, you're just going to be doing this, you're going to be doing that, you're going to be rolling dice, fighting stuff, then your turn's over. What are we trying to do? Well, you're trying to fight monsters and gain these little stones. If you get four, then you're going to fight a big, bad monster. If you beat him, you win the game. Uh, oh, I lost all my health. What happens? Well, you're dead. Oh, man, am I dead? Am I out of the game? No, you're going to start attacking me. I mean, the gameplay itself is very simple. This is a very simple game to teach someone, which is always a good thing. The artwork is outstanding. Now, it's not my personal cup of tea. Normally, I wouldn't like artwork like this. However, this artwork is so well done that even though I don't really like the artwork, I like the artwork, which is the ultimate thumbs up I can give to this artwork. Um, artwork's great. Games, simple and fun, easy to teach, easy to learn. 
A lot of good stuff going on with this game. Graphic design is the big Achilles, here in my, Achilles heel in my personal opinion. But if this looks like it might be your cup of tea, be sure to click on the Kickstarter link below. Tell them Bowers Game Corner sent you. If you enjoyed this content, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below. And also in the comments below, let me know candles or incense. Me personally, I like incense. However, my wife has a, what is it, that thing that makes the room spin around so I can never have incense or she'll pass out so I have to go with candles, which are okay, but I want incense, but you know what, I love my wife, so I deal with it. But tell me in the comments below, candles or incense, and also what's your favorite scent? I personally like Christmas scents. If you enjoyed this content, please, uh, oh, just thank you for your time, YouTube. That was the review for Labyrinthius. For more reviews and previews, check back at Bowers Game Corner. No, Steve, I won't sell it to you. Stop asking.